also? What? Going to games there a lot. It's a very good show. What do you do? They, they enjoy a lot. So I think what I did, I took to the games. I don't mind. This is me only. But when I took the Rally Canary, I can't say he watched this. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what really happened is that my kids, the whole yeshivas, were going to ball games. They wanted to go. The young kids. So I took them. Imagine if they caught me, the photographer, sitting there with them. It was my job, but the Maisa, I took them. But it depends on the pressure. Today, not such pressure, mostly. But there are kids in yeshiva who really want to go to games. A lot of kids best in yeshiva. And a lot of kids in yeshivas that don't admit it. I admit it. There are plenty of kids who want to go to a ball game. Right, Palagon, who want to go to ball games? What is it? Chavetz Chaim, don't have any problem. What is it? Nothing. Zero. So what do you do? Let them go once in a while and go, go with them. Because today, ballpark is not what it used to be. It's much worse today. And so I think the answer is, that if you say no to everything, they're going to say yes to everything eventually. You'll be in big trouble. Banning, last year was a big tumult about 24-6. And I heard they give out a letter on Lakewood. So we have this, I have a way to get to the palace. The son-in-law of Ramakiel Cutler is Avrami Waxman. It was a Talmud of ours, I was the Shachim. I said that right to a shver to tell him, please don't ban it. The Maisa, they didn't ban it, they put a letter against it, but the Maisa, they found out later on, the Rashi, the whole world, who signed the letter, is that the best Bachram were on Spotify, I think it's called, and Apple Music. 24 6 is Yeshua. You can put on there only what you want them to have. It's really a wonderful thing. I'm not giving you, I'm telling you have to go out and buy it. So you, gotta, you have to weigh each thing. You want your kids to be wholesome and healthy and they tire them. You're going to say no to everything? No one argues. Some people are afraid to argue publicly because they, they, they become guidance in part of the world. They will agree to this. You can't say no to everything. Oh, you finished. No more questions. What? Good parents. What? The Shia said um, at the end he's going to talk about parents, good parents. I think parents are wonderful. You want the most school's parents? They're crazy, right? No? I think parents are really wonderful. They really are. When I became a now, about 40 years ago, so I visited about 20 yeshivas, hushes to manalim in America, really. And come on, every manalim said to me, parents are crazy. They're not. Parents are wonderful. The problem parents don't realize sometimes is that we have to deal with an entire class. You have your kid that's all you're interested in. I understand that. So parents have a right to speak up for their child and have a cover dick in their parents' their life. There's nothing wrong going to him now, and you have something on your mind, and speaking to him about it. But if you, you know, you just speak badly about him, or you don't feel nice about him, forget about it. You have valuable, real points sometimes. And I think the Manalim should listen and will listen. Today's Manalim are wonderful. They were yeshiva today, they really are. They understand. It's not perfection. We have in our yeshiva too much beam, it's called in elementary school, that a kid can talk to him about anything they want, and I, my son, my yeshiva, who are, you know, are not going to know about it. Because kids have things on their minds today. Let them talk. I mentioned Rabbi Kielsen before in the high school, right? And Rabbi Feder. Boys talk to them every day in high school. And they get brisk. Wherever they're going to learn. They have things on their minds. So give them to, let them talk to somebody. As a parent, you have a right to bring that to Rosh Hashiva to Manal. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, next. No, not anymore. I'm right. Okay, thank you. Again, what did I say? She was saying before about when you're limiting who your children are playing with and or associating with. You gotta be careful that you become right. You're balancing act, right? It means that if it's really an issue, if it's just a kid who's not as couple shmina as you are, because you think the parents are not as couple shmina. You know, today it's like certain she was certain music you can't get in because you're not learning in code. Right? So but if it's okay, but lots of kids are just fine. I think the answer really is, is that weigh in your own mind. What's going on if you place with that kid on the street? What's going to happen to the kid? You become a shades? Or just it's not going to be your level of, of yadness in the kid's house? Not a reason not to let a kid play. Okay, and then we're focusing on the not developing a gag So you have to tell them a nice hyphen. You're not nice that. Of course, you're not better than the other kid. He may be better than you from the background that he comes from. He didn't grow up like you grew up in our house. Right? He didn't have an upshare three years old, he got a haircut when he was one year old. He didn't grow up like you, whatever it was, right? So, 
So you have to be careful. They shouldn't be from Malaga, but if it's something really major, I don't know if you're allowed to let your kid play in a house where there's internet opening, even if it's not. I mean, I'm not telling all the stories here now. I can tell the stories that are horror stories about this topic. So you have to weigh your own thing and then decide. All right? You invite the, the ladies can ask if you want. We don't mind. I'm from the five towns. It's okay. <laughs> uh -huh. In the first yeah. one, how much affected the parents' behavior all over to the kids? Huge amount. I'm not, I mean, obviously I don't know, the people go here. The, the question Rabbi Maya just asked is how much effect does the parent's behavior, if they're showing bias issues in the home, hide it. Kids are growing up crippled. If they see parents fighting and so on and so forth, it's a very unhealthy thing. So the same thing is true in parents. My mother never read the junk magazines that women do read today or they watch. My mother only read Vita's Digest in our house. That was the, you remember? Vita's Digest. That's what came into our houses, but today it's, it's, it's watching things, right? If your father and mother are not doing what they want you to do, it's not going to work ever. If you, uh, the parent, children will imitate their parents, and if the parent says to them, don't do that, that means nothing. The parents don't do. And I use Shalom Baish as the example of that. I give a vad that's called on Shalom Baish. The vad is like a mini shavuz. Every Thursday, I give a shavuz first to the sifta, then to the smedrish, and then a vad to the shalom bayis. Every other week, every other week, I speak to the bracha more dating, or the big kibbutz it's called. So I talk to them about the shivas you have to have for a wife. Very openly, I talk to them what it means a wife. To the kail, I'm talking about how you treat your wife. Well, don't relax. I, so one of the guys was just, if you tell my wife the same speech you gave me, okay. All right, I mean, so, but I think it's our job. If you're going to tell them, if the parents are not going to have to recover to their wives, how many men make the bed every day? Raise your hands, come on. No, I don't embarrass you. <laughs> I make my bed every single day. You thank your wife for the laundry? I thank my wife at least once a week. She's doing my dirty laundry. Yeah, the wise guy in Yeshiva says, my, my shiksa does it. Thank you very much, okay. But we have to act nicely towards our wives. If we're not going to act nicely towards our wives, forget about it. Forget about it, it's not going to work. The same thing is true in Yahadah's issues. In Yahadah's issues, my mother and father, my mother never, my father, forget, my father never ever said a bad word to my mother all the years. And he was never young, a bad word. Never, ever. Did they disagree? Of course. Human beings can disagree, but their inheritance is covered. And we have to make sure our homes are like that. So I went off the topic a little bit. Went to Sean Bayes, but it's critical. Critical element, you have to make sure that we're nice to, to our wives, it's very, very important. If we're not, it's gonna be issues, it's gonna be issues. You can see clearly which kids come from homes that are azai, homes that are azai. I think it's very, very important. Okay, next. As a rebbe, you see that when we're telling you that we're struggling with technology, is there a whole sick of telling you that you do it for a little bit and try to- How old is the job? Ninth grade. You should never talk to a little bit. If you say no. This is a very, very shy shell. This is a very difficult question. What do you do when you, a kid is dodging for a smartphone, right? In the places where smartphones are with even filtered, right? And the kid is dodging and dodging and dodging and dodging, and you get the feeling if you're not going to say yes to him, he's going to buy his own. When he has Daiti Akhtana, and I didn't ask for any bottle, I think you have to get him a smartphone and take it. Tag it means it's called taking it and holding back anything you got a problem. If not, he's buying his own and it's going to be totally unfiltered. That's what I think. But you have to weigh the Rosh Hashiva or the Banal. But really has to weigh whether or not anything can happen or not. You understand? So, Pshara, you shouldn't make. Pshara, you shouldn't make. But if your kid is going to be one of those guys that picks up a smartphone, you can buy $50 disposables today. So, I think you have to somehow make if you know. Yeah. I have uh, one of my grandchildren always is a threat to their mother. You're going to buy me a smartphone when I'm going to be on the deep? Buy it to me now. The parents shouldn't worry about off the dirt. This is the biggest problem parents have to They come in. What am I going to do? My kids are going off the dirt. Chill. They're not going off the dirt. Kids are very smart. They can do anything they can. They're going to threaten. You have to know your own child. These kids take advantage of the fact that they know, particularly the mothers, Worry about the kid going off the dirt. Just because a kid doesn't go to shul in the morning, a 12-year-old kid refuses to dive in the morning, 
Even a 13 or 14 year old kid is not born with the dark. These things develop with time and with chachma. This is, I'm, I'm going through three, four questions in one question. There are kids that don't want to die with a minion. There are kids that don't want to listen to Kriya Satera. They're not going off to Dara. They're either ADD, the whole world ADD, ADHD, whatever you go, all these letters you go, whatever you want to do. But doesn't mean you have to go off to Dara. So you have to know where, if you know your grandchild, that he's talking, they're sneaking out and doing certain things. Efsha. They use Efsha. it. They use it. They don't do it, but they use it. So you have to, yeah, that means nothing. If the kid uses it, doesn't say, I'm going off to Dara, I'm going to be such and such. Come on, not, you know. They do this. They know what they get their mothers. They know what they do, you know. You know, the fathers, you know, fight on them, you know, so most of them. So, I don't know, you have, to, you, have to, you have to get to weigh each case differently, I think, no? I think it's not easy, it's not easy, yeah. So most of the questions are how do we educate our kids better, how do we make them better? But what about from the parents' perspective facing the school, not from the school down to the parents? Meaning, should the school be as a leader in accepting students? Should they be more accepting? So we have an hour issue, I'll use that example. We have an hour of the two strong classes and two weaker classes. But we will not take in a boy to the yeshiva that we know is flaunting the rules on the internet, let's say. Because that you can't take in. And I tell that's pchira. The kid has no pchira if he's born with an IQ of 90. But a kid has a pchira, a 90 is a low IQ. Uh, you know, those who aren't familiar. If, if, if you're all 90s here, you might be well, I'm just kidding. Anyways. There's a what? A family who's growing, for example. They're not talking about rules. They're, they're agreeing to the rules. They're saying we're okay with the rules. You know, as an so again, you have, to, you have to measure it. Be very careful how you measure it. Okay, I think that's the answer. Do we exclude our children from joining those children? It depends what level they're on. Like I told you, we didn't let any kid go with this television in the house, right? To go to the house. If a kid is bringing... Language is a big problem. My language is a big problem. Some kids just learn to curse because their parents curse. They do, unfortunately. And, and they pick up curse words that I don't want my kid to be near them. Language is important. It depends on what it is, exactly, you know. Mida is important. If you have rotten kids who bully all the time, you don't want them to play with your kid, right? Because they're going to bully your kid. You have to look at these things like bullying. This kid is bullying you in a certain way. I think you have to be very careful. Yeah. Give me an example of the rule. The internet. There's a child that's always partying and goes on the internet. Everybody knows it. But the, the, the school won't get sure, the child. Sure, I don't need it. I just listen. Can the parent have to? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. The boss said you're going to take it. OK. Anyways, <laughs> it's a good question. <clears throat> As a parent. As a parent. You see, the school doesn't make rules, and then the people have tied us to breaking the rules. We have a rule you can't wear white, only black sneakers in Yeshiva, the junior high, right? And a mother kid comes in with a white stripe on it a little bit, right? I say, so you have such parents who are mocking me, go, oh, you let him into school. If I send the kid home with a white stripe, the parents get upset, you know, we have to weigh things. And then I'm out, I'm and I'm saying his name again. When we have to criticize a parent, we have to weigh it and think about it, especially to give a lot of money to Yeshiva, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have to weigh it, you have to see exactly. It's not so posh, but if you know that a kid in the class is flaunting the rules, every parent has to sign a document when they come to the yeshiva they will not allow unfiltered internet in the house. If we find that parent, we call them up. Hi, how you talking? We made a deal, right? So if a kid's coming in and you know it's fun, this school should do something about it. I think so, yeah. So how do you handle that in out of town communities when there's such a diverse type of you know, families in the school? You have a lot of very, very modern. Sensible rules. Yeah. The answer is, the question is, you have a out-of-town community, you have a rich stretch right to left. We have that. Because we are we're a community yeshiva. We might not be the only yeshiva in town, but we're not in a leaders community yeshiva. So we have that problem. So certain rules you can't break. The kid knows, he brings in a smartphone to the yeshiva, he's sent home for a month. Sent, and the second time he can't come back. I'm not a tough guy, but if a kid comes in with a smartphone, and Ben has darn, but if they're going to watch the worst movies, I have a right to make a movie like that. I don't think you have, to, you have to teach your parents in the right way. So if you have a very left-wing parent body mixed in the right wing, they, they will understand, I think. This is how they won't understand. I don't know. If, if, if there's something to get to your issue with a lot of white right-wing kids, right? And our issue, I would still remember this in your school like our school. I imagine, similar issue, right? Probably not just walked out. I'm sure that Chavetz Chaim, it's the same way. I don't think they shout about it. But I think if you make a rule, 
you're sending your kid in, you're not sending him to the local day school. You're sending him to this yeshiva because you want to have a yeshiva, correct? People get angry at Lakewood. Why? They say, Lakewood, you know, they're very tough when they take him. They have a right to say they take him because they built Lakewood to be Altair Sakaidish. And they don't want a kid coming in and ruining the other kids. So if your kid, if say a kid in your class is coming and bringing stuff, I don't get to her modern home. The school is right to Stellerbeck. The area is what they call that uh, Silicon Valley. That, that's what make all the stuff. They don't let the, the kids bring in, you know, phones to school, you know that? They're going because they know what to do to the kids. I saw, so I remember this Fortnite thing. I was very busy with the Fortnite. When it came out, if you remember, four or five years ago, the whole room was busy with Fortnite. So I saw major articles on the kids. No, they bring me in the stuff to get me angry, to round me up. So the kids wrote me an article, it said to Clark, that the guys who developed the Fortnite game don't let the kids play it. They have a job to make money for the company. So I don't think there's anything wrong with putting out the rule. It's not a religious rule. It's a normalcy rule. I think that's very, very important. <coughs> we have a mixed community, so what? I think long term the parents will be happier. Can you also just mention how important it is also that in those situations where parents are not, that are showing they're not aligned with the yeshiva, what that means to the children? And Again, I repeat the question. Meaning when, the, when parents are making the oil picket decisions that they're saying that we're going against the yeshiva's rules, what that means to the, the chinach of their own children? You have a right to put your foot down. You have a 100% right to put your foot down. The communication that, that's also communicated, the communication that's going. Subliminally to the children. I, when I said my shmuz, anybody period lets you play Fortnite, she going. Is that stronger than that? You want a funny story that happened the next day, not next next week. Zevi Paul is exactly is the exact yeshiva. So he comes running to my office and I, can, I keep my door's always open. I never keep my door closed. He was running it. Uh, I, I, I was telling you, you have to. Uh, uh, Rebbe, is it true that you said your shmuz, anybody that plays the Fortnite, you call the mental institution? And he was white like a ghost. I mean, some parent was calling him. What's he talking about? He ran back, came in smiling. He says, the guy called up. He says, I heard I've been such and such. Is it true? He got chalash, like this person gave a huge amount of money, five digits to the yeshiva. Really big money. I mean, five large digits, like $50,000 a year. He was almost in a panic. He came back, Venda said it. Good, I'm giving you another $10,000. <laughs> nice to show you. So I, I'm thinking most parents, I think they're sympathetic. They really are. They're sympathetic. They understand we're trying to protect their children from garbage. Nothing wrong with that. This is a tsara. Rabbi said, this, ladies, this is a real tsara. Technology is a real tsara. And we have to take control of our own homes. We have to. I'm sure that's a no? Nothing. You're doing good. That's how it's going on. Again, today with children, they have to have some of the technology. So that was yes before. Good question. Maybe before you change. Sure, certain computer things they can do. That's kosher, right? You can't take away take away everything that's gone. You have to let them something. Of course, you can't ban everything. But things that are not kosher, you have a right and a chiv to ban. And stop it. I think so. And yeah, good. Did you mention that she has inter classes and strong classes? In the weak classes, it sometimes that stuff is if they're weaker IQ or a little weaker. We, we, no, absolutely not. Good boys. Good boys. And I tell you, Raya Brewer, by the time they're in 12th grade, it's, it's a 50 50, it's 80 to 20 stronger kids. They work their heads off. They want to match up to the other kids. If it happens, Ashkafa is weaker in the weaker in the strong places. I don't think it's. Your parents, your parents push this child into the strong No, you can't put your kid into the strong kid. If you can't, if you can't learn Tysus or Rishayim, I can't put him in there. The kid barely could l learn read two lines of Gemara. I mean, it's, uh, it's not the mice. What about the younger grades? Other way around. Younger grades is no strong and weak, you know. It's, so it's a shkaf more important than the. I don't know, it's hard to say. At that age, it's not so bad. Bechal. The kids are okay. They, they roll along, the kids, I think. You in the back, anything, though? No. no. Okay. In the beginning, we're talking about saying Kehillim and Nason Baal for the Matanar itself. Now, after in the first week after. So, this is very hard. I'm getting ahead of the question. This is our biggest problem right now. This question, what's your name? Shimmy Eisman. Shimmy Eisman, I guess it's a very good question. How do you keep the kids involved in Tillam and the CSO when it's going on and on and on and on? That's your question, no? Yeah, they're resisting. They want to leave. It's like a punishment. We, we struggle with it. We were thinking of cutting down some Tillam. We struggle with this because, you know, when I was in Miri Yeshiva, Mashkiach the Pirsh Feldman, you couldn't say Tillam if the Mincha. Or if the Shabbos of Meir, but I'm asking him Rishus. 
You know, my mother got sick once. I walked up to him and said, Who's not going to tell him? So, Yiddish, my mother. So, what's he? Is he what's wrong with her? Is it an emergency? And he explained to me, he doesn't want to become Bachadik. There's no more, Bachadik means weekday ish. There's no greater example of that going on today. We say, Tell him today, it's Philip. When he was getting sick, he stopped checking. They said, Tell him every single day. They said, Always tell him, right? You know what happened? Kids are running out, they will tell him. That's even worse. So I don't want that to happen to you. We're, we're struggling with that question right now. If that's saying too much tillum, I think you gotta be very careful because stop cutting out of tillum, that would be a problem. So I, I, I don't know the answer yet. We're working on it. Some days a week, some yes. So we're, we're, we're planning on cutting down now, maybe if the Hanukkah cutting down and like, like a, as you said, two, two capital, one capital. Chakras, not mincha, you know, things like that. But you're already only saying one capital for chakras. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every other day. Every other day, maybe Monday and Thursday, you should say, or the other days, maybe that Monday and Thursday is long enough. You can't, you know, these are we struggle. We're all struggling with this question. It's 55 days or something already, right? It's, it's not question. Hanukkah will be two months after the Sufis Tavern, right? Sufis Tavern is called Gimcha Beis. Yeah, since most of the kids don't know what they're saying when they say tell them anyway, maybe they should be taught a Pasuk a day what it means. So said, maybe yeah. I'll sensitize them a little bit to the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Pure yeah. exactly. One of us, one of the minyanas, we have many minyanas she was doing now, is saying one quick tamish, the Dvatera, on the CSL for one minute. That's more interesting. You have, we have to find dates, you're 100 percent right. It's a real problem. I cut you off, but I figured that was a question. Yeah. All right. So we'll have a minute. Yeah, go ahead. How much should a parent, um, if at all, push or fight with the child to do more training? I think zero, leave them alone. Boys don't care about homework, by the way. The girls care about homework. The boys ignore it totally. They don't care. The girls are the ones worrying about homework. I have, we have, for me, I heard in the house, eight children. We're all married. One heard the shit of Eight children. The girls did more homework than the seven boys combined. The girls, seven, much more studies than all the boys combined. And they turned out okay. I think homework was created by a sadistic person. A bad person when I had a bad dream. It's a terrible dream. We have very strong rules to shoot for how long. Homework should be one thing. Chazara of the work. And with the Kaidish, with the Chal, spelling, whatever you do, that's great. I walked into somebody's house not long ago. Got a hit. I went to raise money for Yeshiva, fundraising. There's a girl, 14 year old ninth grader, from the most famous school in our town. She's sitting with a pile of sperm like this. I know the family well. I go to every day fundraising. I said to, I said to the girl, tell me something. What are you doing? She's saying, I'm doing a report on the Hagdama of that Barbanel to Bishle. <laughs> Can I make it up? I said, Say it again. I'm doing a report on the Hagdam of the Barber of the Mishli. I go, okay, I told my wife. My wife and I, there's a topic, we disagree on this topic. She agrees with me. She doesn't like I talk at the girls' schools. She's a teacher of schools four years at the high school. I'm sorry, but it's sitting out with your rules on home it, 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 it's, it's really a sadistic, bad, evil person created it. It's a terrible thing. It's like almost these sirens we had years ago. It, it's, the kids. I got a Rosh Hashiva in the lake, called me up, what should I do? His kids are not bright. So he and his wife, there are I think 12 kids in the family, have to do the homework with the kids. So first of all, you're punishing the mother. The mother says, and when you have one kid who can't do it, there's four in the family who can't do it. He says, my kids are crying until they sleep at night. Because if you don't do, you know, you're a different to the homework. The girls are on the that they bugs up about it. But you don't want to tell a real story. So when I came into the Yeshiva, the baby world, I came in now, all the other baby rolled into me. And one, one Rebbe comes in one day to me, the air, I mean, the steam is coming out of his ears and his nose. And, Look at this note! I'm nice to show you. Dear Rebbe, the Kovendik, I know you gave the kid a 500 time assignment. One of these, I, 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 you will, you will be behaving, whatever it is. And he was tired at 10.30, I told him to go to sleep. She's not protecting me, this is my Shahaya. This could be a video, the Rebbe's going to be tired. The kids are, so, I said to her, what did you give him the sign? Do you know what? I said to her, you know what's going on in the house? The mother has a large family. She has two kids she's breaking us to do the homework with. One kid is crying for a bottle. One kid's crying for a diaper. And the grace of husband comes in, is upset the supper is not ready. And, and this poor lady got to sit on a kid to do 500 times our behaving class. I said to her, how many loose leaf papers is that? I don't know. So you should know before you give out a sign like that. You should know, no, this is an old time remedy. You get these guys here, at least 20 years on me. And, and I said to him, you should know, it's 18 loose leaf papers. 
18. He should do it. I told him to do it. And the mother says, you know how to do it. I got so, I couldn't convince the Rebbe. I told him, you know what? I used Chaim. I used Chaim. Reb Chaim, tomorrow you bring in the assignment a hundred times. Now I'm getting the assignment. To the yes, you are. So I'm not doing it. You are. You're not coming in tomorrow to teach him that. It's a private conversation by you. Officer. You have to do it a hundred times. He came in the next day. He never even signed with ever again. I think the people who went to homework would have to do the homework, would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, write, I write up my son's homework and message to the Rebbe or if I think that he doesn't want to do it. It doesn't have to you know, I publish books on Chiruch, so kids do that. You know, it's, it's a little chutzpah for a kid, you know what I mean? But uh, homework, you just, I just can't figure it out. And with these competitive schools, you have to give more homework and more homework and more homework, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. It's not a good thing. So practice, the work, practice. Give a practice sheet in a minute, a practice sheet in vocabulary, that's fine. But they give them pages and pages. Show them, you know, kids, I miss your question. How many hours of homework do they do to the girls? More than enough. Huh? More than enough. I, I'm not picking on girls because of this, I'm sorry for question. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm picking on girls because of my neighborhood, maybe, okay? Lakewood has the problem to a very large degree, Lakewood. They really do. Boys, forget it. They don't do homework. They're not interested. Get to the no second department like the reason the high school anymore. But uh, so license but you have to you have to be very, very careful. The bigger problem is oh. if it's a problem. I want you to come up here. No, yeah. girls girls know how to copy other girls' homework. Now especially with the AI, right? Yeah, but without AI. They just know how to copy. Girls are willing to do it. Maybe some girls sell it. I don't know. What's the business? But girls manage to get it done if they really want to do it, if they don't want to work out. You have shrewd girls in town. All right. <laughs> right. Or, 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 or you, then you have to worry about the meat. This nothing, about nothing good will ever come out of homework, ever, ever. Only torture. Yes. How do you balance, the kid doesn't want to do the homework, how do you balance you not, you're, you're going against, he's going against the schools, asking you. You had a note, he was very tired. If he just stay up and play for two hours, but if he's ready, he or she, I say you, because I'm working the boys as you. Uh, he or she was very tired. I couldn't force him. You know, most teachers will understand that. Or if you don't want to finish it, he, uh, it's too many, too many words, too many problems. But man, so you give it a little bit, a little bit, give it a little bit. Don't give in. That's all. Make your deal. What do you do when a kid doesn't go to dining in the morning to me? What do you do? None of you had the problem. You just walk him or hold him out. Huh? What do you do? You throw water on him, he doesn't move. What do you do? So if it works, 90% of the time, I tell him, okay, today stay in bed, tomorrow you gotta go. Really? Yeah, they'll do it. Now you have to be sure to cooperate with that. Why should a kid want to get up at 6.30 when they come home at 7 o'clock at night? Why should he want to? We went to Turkey at 9 o'clock, you know, 5 o'clock. They got to get up now to go on buses at 6.30, stay there all day long, and then, then do homework? Come on. So I think if a kid really doesn't want to go, you don't make a man this time, right? right? Today you can stay in bed. <laughs> Tomorrow you got to go to school. You got to find aces to work with kids. Uh, you know, none of you have kids like that that we got in bed? Ah, show me. Yes, he's a tzaddik. Yes, he is. It's it's a problem. The girls, no problem, really. Shabbos morning, the girls love it, right? What time do kids get up? The girls get up Shabbos morning. No, <laughs> you have to wait for the meal till they wake up, right? That's, you're laughing. How many girls do you have? Show me. Four. Four girls. Eleven o'clock. That's good, 11 o'clock. And then they start dominating. What's that? The boys are They stand in the corner. They say every word, you know. And you gotta wait for the meal, right? Have a good night. Thanks to everybody. Well, Meyer, if those ones down, right? Okay, there's Meyer in here, right? Try out. Is that Meyer? Is that Meyer?